Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another one of Pop Culture Addicts Five at Fives. Now, if you follow this podcast, clearly you do. If you're here watching this, kudos to you. Uh, but if you also notice that Kathleen and I host another show called Funny Science Fiction Podcast, and on both this show and that show, I make no qualms about the fact that I am a huge Star Wars fan. It's part of everything I do in life. It, matter of fact, most of the Funko Pops behind me are, in fact, Star Wars uh, in some form or fashion, some character here or there. But one of the things that I have never understood since the movie came, the movies came out, not just the movie, but the string of movies with the sequel movies is the hate for Ray Skywalker. And a matter of fact, I'm going to go through five reasons why Ray is in fact a Skywalker and we all just need to get over it. So number five, my dudes, it's canon. It's in the movie, it's in the film. It's never disputed, not even by the old lady when Ray looks at her and says, Ray Skywalker. The old lady doesn't look at her and go, hmm, no, I've known this parts and there's no Skywalkers anymore or anything along those lines. It's never disputed, not once, ever. It's in the movies, let it go. I could stop there. That should be enough. But unfortunately, I know that there's a lot of fr fragile fanboys out there who aren't gonna be able to take that and just move along. So we're gonna go through four more points of reasons why Ray is in fact a Skywalker. Number four, look at the maternal connection that she had with Leia. Leia took her in as, as a mother. Ray never experienced that. She never had a mother, someone to draw her in, someone to take her in. And so that was the maternal connection that she was missing. So there was very much a connection there. And for many of you out there, I'm sure that you can identify with that feeling. When somebody says, that person was like a father to me, that person was like a mother to me, and you begin to identify with that person as part of their family. Now, whether or not you take the name legally or, or just by, by adoption of name, you take that person as part of your family. In fact, their connection was so strong. The last time that Ray left Leia, Leia began to cry. It's, it's, yeah, there's a very strong connection there. And so the fourth reason is that there is a connection, a strong connection between Leia and Ray itself. Number three, yes, it is not a blood connection. That's obvious. She is not, she is not a Skywalker by birth. She is a Palpatine by birth. Now their connection, although there is the maternal connection with Leia, there's also a force connection with Luke and Leia. There is a connection that way. As a matter of fact, we go to the end of the movie, The Rise of Skywalker, which the movie title alone should give you a hint, right? I mean, come on. But the force, the force ghost at the end gives the approval. The force ghost of both Luke and Leo watching her tell the little old lady that, yes, I am Rey Skywalker. There's emotional connection. There's a force connection. There is the personal maternal connection. Again, Rey is a Skywalker. Number two, one of the biggest tropes in Star Wars is found family. It's used in almost every movie. In fact, I think it is used in every Star Wars movie. It's the, star, it's the found family. It's not the family that you have, but it's the family that you find along the way, the family that you make along the way. For Luke, that was very much the rebellion. That was his found family. Luke had an aunt and uncle. But after, especially after they were lost, he attached immediately to Obi-Wan Kenobi. He attached to him, then he lost him. Then he attached to Han and Chewie and Leia until even after, you know, up until the point he found out that Leia was indeed his sister. But there's that found connection. We can see that in the Clone Wars with the clones. We can see that in Star Wars Rebels with Ezra Bridger looking for a family. In fact, that whole group there with Hera, with Kanan and, you know, and Sabine and, and everyone else, that is found family. That group was their family. In the Bad Batch, we see it with Omega, and again, with the clones, of course, and I could go on and on, but found family is very much a very large part of Star Wars lore. And if you don't recognize that connection, it's not gonna allow you to see that people adopt people into their families. And it's the same thing that we do now in our real life outside of Star Wars, there is such a thing as found family. That is a very much predominant story, not only in fantasy, not only in sci-fi and you know action movies or whatever, found family doesn't just stop here. I could keep saying it, found family, found family, found family, 
And I don't know if it will get the point across as strong as it should. But that is one of the biggest reasons that she is, in fact, a Skywalker. But the number one reason, the number one, the big enchilada. Guys, she just is. She adopted the name. She chose to not be a Palpatine. She chose not to be identified with the leader of the Sith, the most evil man in her galaxy, the most evil man that she's ever known. It doesn't matter that the Pal that she's Palpatine by blood. She chose not to be identified with that. She chose to be identified as a Skywalker because that was the group of people that she saw doing good. Sure, she didn't know Anakin and the things that he had done and how he became Darth Vader and helped her grandfather take over the galaxy. She knew none of that. What she knew is that Luke and Leia were Skywalkers and that Luke and Leia were helping people and trying to do good. She knew who they were and she knew what that name meant to her. And really, isn't that what it's about? When you're adopted, and speaking as an adopted person, by the way, when you're adopted, you can choose to identify with that new family. I have a different na last name by birth. I, When I turned 18 years of age, I could have made the choice to identify with my birth name or stay with my adopted name. I chose to identify with my adopted name. Does that mean I'm not really a member of that other family anymore? No. It means this is who I choose to identify with because I not only did I legally adopt the name when I was adopted in my early teens, but when I turned 18, I made the conscious decision that this is who I was going to identify with. And that's the same thing Ray did in the movies. Ray is a Skywalker. It's canon. Ray is a Skywalker because of her connection to Luke and Leia. Ray is a Skywalker because of the force connection that they share in the story line going all through Star Wars. Ray is a Skywalker because of found family. Ray is a Skywalker because she chose to be adopted and to be identified as a Skywalker instead of a Palpatine. That's it, guys. That's the end of the story. That might be hard for some of you to agree with, and, and a lot of you aren't going to like it but it's canon. It's time to put down the fight. It's time to move along. It's time to enjoy the movies instead of picking them apart. If you agree with me, there's gonna be a, a like and subscribe button clicking up here. Click that, follow us here. Check us out on Funny Science Fiction Podcast as well. You guys might like some of the stuff that we talk about. That's it, that's five for five. Take care guys.